Hi guys, Squad here, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this video, we are going to take a look at a little bit more of a real-world scenario in terms of flying VFR. Uh, rather than just, you know, jump in a plane and go, hey, let's fly over here, I thought we'd take a look at what it's actually like to fly uh, VFR as a real pilot. And to do this, I've spawned in the Cessna 172. I'm on runway 20 at North Weald Airfield. This is the airfield that I fly out of uh, in real life. Unfortunately, it's not brilliantly modelled, I have to say. Uh, it's okay, but, you know, I would love a proper scenery pack from here. The place here is very different to what it's got now. Uh, you've got the Mets police here with the helicopters, you've got air ambulance here. Uh, there's a few more hangars, there's you know, a marketplace, one of the runways is, is basically closed to the market. There's a lot of logistics operations out of here now. Um, there's, there's a lot going on which is not actually modelled, but that doesn't matter. I don't want to uh, focus on that anyway today. So I use an app called Sky Demon, and we're going to use this app to plot this route and discuss some of the problems that you face as a real pilot and things you have to deal with. So we're not going to talk to any ATC, we're not going to even touch on ATC, which is an entirely different subject, but I just want to kind of introduce you to airspace and the ways that you have to kind of navigate your way around and through airspace. So first of all, let's bring down uh, my app here. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now this is actually my, my iPad. There we go. Just move around, you should see it move. It's my iPad, and I've got it mounted on my honeycomb yoke right now, which is cool, because it's kind of how I have it in real life. Uh, and we're just going to create a route, so I'll click Create Route, and we're going to go from EGSX, which is North Weald, and it'll say, where do you want to go to? And we'll say, uh, Duxford, EGSU. There we go, Create Route. Cessna 172, so it's got the profile for the 172, although the town number's wrong, doesn't matter. Create Route, and there it is. So. We'll zoom in now, and this is where you start to see all kinds of stuff and complexity, and you're like, what the heck is all that? And, yeah. Basically, this is on effectively the north side of London. Uh, as you can see, this is London's airspace. <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting place, you know? You've got on the left there, you've got Heathrow. On the right, you've got South End. Below it, you've got Gatwick, and then above it, you've got Luton and Stansted. This is a very busy area of the country and it's uh, it's a bit interesting to fly out of but basically uh, the, the bottom line here is that you can't just take off out of North Weald and head straight for Duxford because you'll smash all the way through Stansted's airspace as you can perhaps note there so how do we actually navigate this how do we how would we get how would I fly if I wanted to fly from Duxford how would I do it um, essentially there's perhaps three ways of doing it one of the ways is to fly you know, west of uh, Stansted to kind of go out this way via maybe the Brooklands Park VOR. You could go out that way and just try and stay west of Stansted. Uh, the other way is you can go east to Chelmsford and then navigate your way around the east side. And the other way is you could take off, immediately talk to Stansted and ask them, can you get a zone transit from Stansted through the, uh, to the north? And if they were really friendly and you sound like you know what you're doing, they'll probably let you do that and you can just fly straight through Stansted's airspace and look down at all the planes and it's kind of cool. Uh, what I will do today is we'll take the easier one. We'll take the east side uh, approach um, up to Duxford. And what I'm going to do is if we click on the airfields on the right here and it shows North Wales, Stansted and Duxford. They're, they're roughly on the flight plan at the moment. And we'll click on um, Duxford. And then we'll go down to the bottom there and choose Pooley's Plate. And this will bring up a plate of Duxford. And it, it contains a lot of useful information. Obviously, at the top there, you've got the various frequencies. Uh, but you can see the runway itself. Uh, the main runway is a tarmac runway, uh, 1.5 kilometers long, 1,500 meters. And then there's a grass runway of 800 meters there. Uh, they do a lot of shows out of Duxford, especially during the summer months. So it's a great place to visit. They have a bunch of hangars with museums and planes, and it's a really good place to fly to, um, and even just visit, you know. But to fly to it's cool because you and all your passengers get a free two-hour ticket into the museum, which is kind of cool. Um, so we scroll down, and then it has some interesting information down here. There you go. Inbound routes to avoid infringements of controlled airspace. It actually gives you some help. It says, on the third one, inbound from the east, 
uh, it says route Clacton VOR. We're not going to do that because that's further east. Then it says go via the uh, Haverhill VRP and then Duxford. It also says inbound from the south to pass east of Stansted number two. That's the one we want. So if we were coming in from the east, we'd do three. If we're coming in from where we are, um, well, actually more west, we'd do one. And if we're coming in from where we are now, we would do number two. So number one will take us west of Stansted and number two will take us east of Stansted. So this looks good. It says route Chelmsford VRP. A VRP is a, a visual reference point. They use quite a lot by ATC. Basically points that you can identify as a pilot and they can say, you know, fly to Chelmsford VRP, you know, and, and then wait for the instructions. So Chelmsford VRP, then Halstead, and then Haverhill VRP, and then Duxford. So let's see if we can find those and actually plot the route. So first one's pretty easy. We'll come out of Earl's, uh, Earl's Cone. We'll come out of North Weald and we'll fly to Chelmsford VRP. And you can even see it's on the map as a big V there. It's like Sky Demon puts it in as a as a point. You may have noticed down at the bottom, uh, that's a vertical profile. And you can see all the airspace that, that we are basically cutting through. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Then we need to find the next waypoint, which is Halstead. Halstead is just next to Earl's Cone. Earl's Cone is where I, I got my PPL. But we'll drag that up to Halstead like that. So that's the next one done. And then further north, we should be able to find Haverhill, which is there. So that is the recommended route if we want to stay east of Stansted's airspace. Now that's not the end of it. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things going on. So the first and most notable thing to mention is North Wheel actually sits, as you can see here, you see that kind of blue area? North Wheel sits underneath the Stansted shelf. It says there's CTA 1500 to 2500. That is their, their airspace. That is Class D airspace. 1,500 feet to 2,500 feet. And North Wheel sits underneath that shelf. When you take off out of North Wheel, you have to stay under 1,500 feet before you get out of that shelf. So as we fly east, we'll very quickly leave that 1,500 limit and then we can actually climb up. Um, as you can see on the vertical profile at the bottom. However, all of this kind of sits underneath the red, you see that big, big red ring? That's the London TMA. All of it sits underneath that because you've got planes coming in and out of here all the time. So we can't go up too high. But on the vertical profile at the bottom, you can kind of see that that airspace is about two and a half thousand feet. So if we basically drag this down and say we want to fly, let's drag that to there, and we'll drag that one to there. Let's just say we want to fly in at 2,000 feet. Just put that one on. Got fat fingers. There we go. 2,000 feet. That looks pretty good. So 2,000 feet basically bring keeps us underneath the London TMA, the red stuff. But over near Haverhill, it looks like we're cutting through some uh, Class D airspace. So we need to go and figure that one out. So let's have a look at the first leg. And the first leg, if we flew at 2,000 feet. We will be flying over Willingale, but that's not really a problem. We'll go to Chelmsford, and then we will turn and fly a new heading towards Halstead. And you can see the TMA there, TMA 2500, in the, uh, just next to Boreham. So we're underneath that, so that's fine. And then we get up to Earl's Cone. And Earl's Cone, we need to stay out of that little ring there. We don't want to fly in the, the um, ATZ, which is about two miles uh, radius. We don't want to fly within that. So we just need to be careful when we go into Halstead that we're cutting in between the blue space on the left and Earl's Cone on the right. Yeah, it, it really is interesting flying around here. <laughs> and then we're going to set off on our third leg, which takes us up to uh, Haverhill. And when we get to Haverhill, after that, we are then, and this is where we see the blue space there, you see that? We are cutting in to Stansted CTA again. So we've got two options here. Either when we get to Haverhill, we drop down under 1,500 feet, which is one option, uh, or we basically, you know, use our Sky Demon or any Garmin system on board and just kind of cut around it. Or you could even, if you wanted to, 
modify your flight plan and just maybe punt Linton in like that, you see? If you go for Linton, you run perilously close to Stansted's airspace, uh, but you actually get yourself around it. Now, what I would do is I would fly to uh, Haverhill, and then I would probably keep on track and then until Linton was west of me, and then I'd turn uh, on a westerly heading to Linton. So I'd probably do something more like that in real life. Uh, if you've got an onboard GPS system of some description, then it's a bit easier, but I don't want to get so close to um, Stansted's airspace. So basically, that is the route plotted. And we've got the vertical profile set. Uh, we've got our lateral navigation set. You would then click on warnings on the top right there. And you would say your journey finishes inside of Duxford. That's fine. If we, by the way, if we remove that little waypoint at Linton and let it cut in and then go to warnings, it says your journey passes through London Stansted CTA, which is a Class D airspace. So it actually gives you a warning about that, which is kind of handy. Uh, you would then look at your NOTAMs and make sure things are fine. You look at your weather, which is currently absolutely appalling, so we're not using live weather. And then you go to your airfields and you could check on various things, like if you want to see what Duxford looks like from an aerial perspective, satellite imagery. You know, you can see that they basically have a pattern. There's no, um, there's no dead side at Duxford. Uh, you're either flying a right-hand circuit uh, into 2-4, or you're flying a left-hand circuit into... Uh, into Sorry. You're flying a right-hand circuit into 2-4, or you're flying a left-hand circuit into 0-6. Um, That's the way it works. You're either flying clockwise or anti-clockwise on this. It actually tells you, if you go to the Pooley's plate, if you actually go down the bottom of the plate, they actually give you this, uh, although you have to turn your head to the left, uh, they basically say to you that, and you can see those little towns, you can't overfly those towns either. So you have to basically circuit your way around those towns. Anyway, currently, um, currently the uh, SimConnect system is still broken, so I can't actually, I can't actually link up. What, what I would love to do is link up the Sky Demon and have it track my flights across the map here. So instead what we'll do is we're going to use this, but I've not plotted the route in at all. We're just going to use it as a visual reference. So as we take off, you should start to see these um, these areas that I was talking about. And this will give us a useful guide. But essentially we're going to take off and fly uh, to the east here. Follow that road. By the way, I didn't show you this. Um, let me bring the thing back down. If you click on pilot log at the top, it actually gives you a flight plan uh, which is something that you normally you used to fill these in manually but most 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 students these days kind of just get this thing to generate it for them however there is a there is a little caveat because it is taking live weather and and we're not going to have this weather in my sim right now because i'm not using live weather uh, but if we did have this um wind then this would be our magnetic heading that we'd be taking for each leg so when we take off out of Chelmsford, we're on a 097 heading to get to, Stel uh, to Halstead and so on. So we're going to have to slightly wind correct because this wind is not going to apply. Uh, but it does give you your, your minimum sector altitudes here. And you can see that at 2,000 feet, we're, uh, we're more than above that. Anyway, so I didn't want to focus on starting the plane and stuff like this. I just wanted to um, show you all of that stuff. So let's... We've got flaps deployed. I think we've got flaps here it, by default. I would. I'm just going to retract them. I don't take off with flaps in the 172 unless we're doing any kind of short field work. All of our lights are set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bug the heading for our first heading, which is, well, 097, assuming a 174 wind, which would be coming in from. Uh, the right there, so it's assuming we're going to get pushed that way, so they're probably corrected too much to the east. So I'm going to just knock it back a little bit like that, and I think, and we'll just keep our eye on this and see how it goes. Um, so really what we're doing here is a combination of things. We are flying visually, so I'm going to be looking out for these visual reporting points. Um, and we're going to be using just the Garmin as a, uh, a kind of where we are reference. So we're kind of combining two things. We're not we're not IFR, certainly. Um, we are very much VFR, but we're using a little bit of technology just to um, help us out. We could, of course, just punch a route into here and, you know, just fly the magenta line, but that's not what I wanted to do. 
I didn't want to show you that stuff. Let's do something more fun. Right, let's get the power on. Airspeed is building. The plane is drifting. It really is drifting, actually, blimey. I don't know what wind is in the sim, but... Okay, let's just fly the runway heading. Okay, up she comes. That's better. Altitude 500 feet. Remember, we can't go 1500. You can see on the Garmin to the right there, you see that blue, that blue box? You see how we're still in that blue box? That is... Stansted CTA. So until we leave that blue box, we cannot go above 1500. In reality, we don't go above about 1200 because you can get blown by wind very quickly, get 200 feet. And if you go into that airspace, by the time you get back, you'll have a phone call. And that's not something you want. So you can see we're just coming out of Stansted airspace. And by the way, if you have the the sim connected to a GPS system, or if you have it connected to your sim, the Sky Demon connected to your sim, it will give you airspace warnings. Uh, so it's kind of cool like that. Right, what I want to do is just steady the plane around, and we're going to use the autopilot system just to help us out. So first of all, we're going to put our altitude on 2,000 feet. We're going to turn the autopilot on. We'll put it into heading mode. We'll put it into altitude hold mode and then let it settle down and then go V speed. Okay, why have you not? There we go. V speed, 500 feet per minute climb, and verify heading V speed. Let's keep an eye heading. V speed should be around about 500. We're in charge of the throttle. Hopefully you watch my basic autopilot video and you know exactly what we're doing. And if we look at the Garmin system here, you see that, re that uh, grey line? That is the A414, which is right there. I would normally use that as a great guide to take me to Chelmsford, because literally the A414 goes to Chelmsford. Uh, so let me just turn the heading slightly clockwise, as I know that in the distance the 4 and 4 there and Chelmsford is going to be down here somewhere. So that is more or less the first leg taken care of. Let's just, when it gets to altitude, it will of course pitch down. But it is a, it's a lovely place to fly and it is modelled so well, so incredibly well in the sim. And the more east you go, the more the airspace restrictions will lift and you can really go and enjoy yourself. Which is why a lot of a lot of student pilots end up flying east and training out there because they can climb a lot higher. You get out of the London TMA, things are a lot easier. Right, there's 2,000 feet coming up. And it's leveling us out. I'm just going to bring the power back a little bit. Let the RPM settle down. Looking for about 23, 2400 is a, a decent cruising out. Uh, decent cruising power level and yeah if we zoom in it won't actually show us Chelmsford on the map but we know it's over here it's about you see that kind of that's the A12 that goes around it so that is Chelmsford there's EGSX that's what we've just left and uh, when we track on our next leg that's when we're going to have to start thinking a little bit more because right now we've got out of a lot of the problem area for now. We'll just bring this back. There you go. So we are approximately here. And when we get to Chelmsford, whoops, let me get rid of that. When we get to Chelmsford, we are, according to this, going to fly a magnetic heading of about 033. 
but we're going to have to manually connect for uh, wind. But you can see this this TMA 2500, we need to stay under 2500, but that's fine. We're going to cruise through here at 2000, but it is something to be aware of if you were flying from Chelmsford to Braintree. Um, if you go too high, you're going to smash into um, London's TMA. You don't want that. The main problem is going to be here, the pinch point when we get to Earl's Cone. That's where we're going to be sat between Andrews Field, Earl's Cone and this Stansted uh, CTA. So this is where you have to be very careful. And there's a mast there if you look. So in real life, that's where you need to start focusing. Right, that's definitely Chelmsford ahead. I'm just going to head over to the city centre a little bit. The actual VRP would be somewhere in the middle of the city, but... It's a great view, isn't it? It's so authentic. This is literally what it's like, guys, when you fly. It really is just like this. It's so good. Right, if I just sit up slightly... This is the 414 coming in here. So there used to be a bowling centre there. You've got Volkswagen um, garage over here. And then the actual main town is here. So the VRP probably reports around about the middle there where these sort of high rise buildings are. Although there's not that many. There's not quite as many as that in Chelmsford. They did a decent job though. Right, so at this point, as we're approaching our turning point, this is where I would be thinking about what I'm going to do next. Um, so I would look down at my pilot log and I would see the 033. Um, good pilots also have a stopwatch and they'll basically like record the time when they make this turning here. So that it's like a time turn talk thing. Well, there's, there's a few more T's involved that you can do. You've got time to turn talk, twist, tyres, like there's all kinds, of stuff, all kinds of acronyms in flying. But time turn talk is good enough for us. So we'd make a note of the time. Uh, we'd turn to our new heading of 033. And we'd talk to ETC if we needed to. So this is Chelmsford. I'll let you get a load of this before we turn. Look at that. Look at that. There's the main park there. There's the cricket ground. All right. Let's get turning. So... We'd make a note of the time, we'd turn onto our new heading of, let's go for a 3, it should be 3-3, uh, three, three, 0 three, 3 but 3 will do. Let's have a quick look, yeah there's the main road there, big roundabout here. Train station, there's the train line there, that's the arches that goes over that partway, there's a train. You ever been to Chelmsford train station on a sim? That's where it is. And then this goes off to Braintree. Yeah, Chelmsford's a city. Achieved city status a few years ago. Okay, so how are we doing? So that we're going to use for our reference points next. Let's have a quick look and see if we can uh, see what's coming. So this orange circle here, can't quite see it, but this is going to be Earl's Cone, EGSR. This is Andrews Field, EGSL. And notice the blue line there. That blue line is the Stansted CTA. And that orange line, which I showed you, is the London Terminal area. So this is the bit now where we have to stay under 2,500 feet at all times. And we don't want to go inside Els Cone's um, ATZ there. So we're going to have to navigate just through the... To be honest, Els Cone, if you're like above 2,000 feet, then strictly speaking, you're not in their ATZ anyway. Um, but it is something... It is, like, it is wise to talk to them. Like, it's best to basically talk to them and say, uh, I'm going to be overflying your ATZ and depart to the north, 2,000 feet, and they'll just say, fine, like... They have, they're only a radio station, they have no control over you anyway. But, you will at least then hear all the comms that's going on, because uh, you get a lot of student pilots coming in and out of Earl's Cone, and they do come in at like 2,000 feet. 
and then descend on the dead side. So if you're flying across at 2,000 feet, chances are, you know, you're going to run into some trouble. So it's always best to either be a little bit higher or at least talk to them so you're able to listen to what's going on. And they have, like, helicopters coming in as well, so... God, this scenery, man. Get over it. So, yeah, we need to keep an eye out as we get a bit closer. Oops, just turn the uh, ADF. And then we'll have to start keeping our eye out for the actual airfield itself. It isn't the easiest thing to spot Earl's Cone. Um, but once you know what you're looking for, you actually don't really look for the runway. You look for... Earl's Cone is like a giant triangle. Uh, because it used to be back in the wall... It used to be one of the airfields that they flew bombers and stuff out of. And it actually used to have three runways, which was a very common thing back then, arranged in a triangle, which meant you could more or less land into wind, no matter what the wind was doing. And over the years, they got rid of two of the runways, and the actual triangle is now uh, an industrial park and a golf course. <laughs> so what you tend to look for is that. You tend to look for the triangle of that stands out, the golf course and the industrial area, stands out from all the fields. And then you kind of notice the runway. It tends to be how it works. So this on the left, uh, this is Braintree that we're passing now. Uh, like I say, if you if you were, let me just bring the um, Sky Demon down. If we was connected via Sim Connect right now, it would actually show us on the on the um, Magenta line or network or off the Magenta line because we're not we're not flying nav mode. Um, we might be here, say, and we're cruising along. But it would actually show us where we are, um, and, and we're about here, which means that on the left is is indeed Braintree. Just there. Which is uh, quite, a built, quite a big town. So how are we getting on? Right, so fairly soon I'm going to track, in fact now I think I'm just going to take a small turn. I want to make sure we miss this standstill airspace, but I don't want to invade EGSR start making a look out for it now see if we can actually spot it, you see there's chances are that's it a lot of industrial buildings there, what looks like a golf course maybe and quite possibly that bit there is the runway if that was a betting man I would say that was EGSR I'm not entirely sure what that is, though. Also, when you're um, when you're on route um, in, a, in a real plane, you would do certain other checks, um, like they call freedy checks, where you would you know look at your fuel level, make sure that's what you're expecting it to be, and you've got enough fuel left. Uh, check your radios. Yeah, very important to make sure you've not accidentally change the frequency, you wonder why nobody's talking to you, you press the squelch button, make sure everything's still working. Uh, you check all your engine stuff, you check your um, check your temperature of your oil, oil pressure and temperature are very important, and then you'd make sure you've got vacuum. You'd notice if your vacuum went anyway, because this attitude indicator amongst other things would start spinning around. Uh, but they're the kind of things that you check. Uh, then you check your DI, because um, a lot of people are confused about this, but this, this DI here um, basically it has like a, a gyroscope in it, so it's it's subject to what they call precession. Hang on, it's like a turning. Not paying attention. Kind of invading Earl's Cone space now. Yeah, there it is. It is that. That is Earl's Cone. So this is the dead side, and they come in and land either this way or that way, depending on the... Sorry, they come in this way and they land either left or right, but it's always on that side. This is the dead side. The other side is the circuit. Um, so very quickly, we are coming up on this town here, which is... If I can actually drag this thing down. This is Halstead, right here. This is the town of Halstead. That we need to make our next turn. So, if I sit back down again. We've more or less creeped into Wells Cone's airspace, but not to worry, I was too busy talking. The main thing is, we are just about over Halstead. That's Halstead right there. And our next heading 
after Halstead was 3-1-1. So 3-1-1 was going to be our heading. We'll put it on uh, about 3-10 there. Uh, and then we'll, we've got to then watch what happens because we need to stay away from this airspace. Um, in real life, the DI drifts is what I was going to say about... The, it's because of magne uh, gyroscopic precession. precession. Um, what happens is this is accurate. This is your magnetic compass. And this will drift. So every now and again, when you do your 3D checks, you check in to see that um, that magnetic heading corresponds to this. If it doesn't, you basically turn this to correct it. Um, that's what you need to do. Otherwise, you're, you're basically heading the wrong direction. Right, let's go for um, new heading. By the way, my, um, my heading bug only goes in like 10 degrees at the moment. And it happened on my previous video, and some of you guys commented and said it's something to do with the honeycomb yoke. Um, it's like a known bug, but I don't know if they're going to fix it soon or not. I do have a honeycomb yoke, and for some reason, and I did have it in that last video, I did have it going from 10 degrees to 1 degree, and I can't work out how or why that happened, but it is a bit of a pain, because I can't actually adjust this in more than 10 degree jumps right now. And it's, we better actually turn to the right slightly because, like I say, this um, this plan done by Sky Demon is actually expecting a wind to be blowing from the south, so it's expecting us to get pushed north, which is probably not happening right now. So we just need to sort of follow the track that way and stay north of that uh, standstill space. That's kind of cool. I do like the way they've got cars and trucks and stuff driving on the correct side of the road. Like in the UK, they're driving on the left. However, I've also noticed they sometimes have like American trucks in Europe and then you'll get European trucks in the States, which is a little bit weird. Now, according to this, there is EGZD which is, I think, Bloom's Farm. It's just a little grass runway strip, so... Just like a private airfield. It's one of those things that, you know, you just need to be to watch out for, but you don't need permission to, to go over it. They don't have an ATZ at all. But it's good to know, because, like, if you suddenly had an engine failure, it's always best to go for a some local farm strip runway than it is landed in a random field. However, when you fly in this area, you'll notice we, we are not short of fields. So... It's not like flying over mountainous, tree-covered terrain. Like, if you have an engine failure, there it is, look. If you have an engine failure, you've actually got a decent chance of getting it on the ground safely. It's like, pick a field, any field. Right, so... We're okay on standstill airspace. We're just past Bloom's Farm. Which means... We have a look on here. We know that we just passed Bloom's Farm. We are currently tracking directly for Haverhill. And then after that, I will probably skirt around this CTA. We're going to look for Linton. That's going to be the main thing. We can actually hold that heading and then look for Linton because straight after Linton is Duxford. And I'm willing to bet that right ahead of us is Haverhill. Haverhill's quite a big town looking at the map. It also It's also useful to have a uh, an actual printed uh, VFR chart as well as um, as well as, you know, your Garmin system because at the end of the day you've got to think, you know if the worst happens and your iPad shuts down and the Garmin system can't find out where it is you know, if the GPS suddenly goes for whatever reason you know, I bet you wish you brought a printed map. <laughs> At least you can kind of visually get yourself home kind of thing. Which is how it used to be done. Yeah, that's definitely it. That's definitely Haverhill. So you see why this is one of the VRPs, because it is such an easy thing to find. VRPs on, on the maps are, are, are chosen deliberately because they are so easy to find. So pilots can go to them quite easily and identify them. So Haverhill's here, 
according to the log, after Haverhill was supposed to take um, a heading of uh, 269, I think it is. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep flying a little bit past the fact. EGSU, there you go, there's Duxford. There is Duxford indeed, so we'll just correct so that we overfly Haverhill. And then we'll stay north of that CTA, and then we'll, we'll literally head west to EGSU. I mean, with a system like this, you can just click direct and EGSU, and it'll take you there, but that's not really what I was wanting to show. I was wanting to show a little bit more older school way of doing things. Which is probably useful, because if you ever fly... If you ever fly or do your PPL or learn in the UK, you'll find that our aircraft are um, not like this. <laughs> They're not like this. The, this is this is quite advanced <laughs> for most of the stuff that you'll fly when you're a student. You know, you you'll be very lucky if you get one of these. Right. Let's get ready. next turn. So we need to find the town of Linton. Let's make sure... Wow, look how detailed that is. Blimey, that's good. That looks so genuine. And obviously when you zoom in and look really close, it's a bit, you know, but crikey, that looks good from there. Okay, we are not far away now. Let's turn left. Onto as close as I can get at 269 heading. But making sure that we don't cut in to this airspace. And what we're looking for now is we're looking for Linton. And Linton should be see with the corner of that airspace, Linton's about here. Right, so I'm just going to turn it right 10 degrees just to make sure we don't cut into that. If I just bring this down one more time, you will see that Linton is here, so that corner there should be a little built-up area where that is. And then we should be able to find Linton and be straight in. What we'll do is we'll, turn, we'll take a, a left base straight in to Duxford. We're not going to try and join the downwind leg or anything like that. It wouldn't make much sense, I don't think. I think this is that Linton. I think that might be Linton ahead. Of course, the other things that kind of fight you in, uh, when you're flying VFR is, is just the weather. It doesn't even have to be raining. It just has to be like this, like where you've got a lot of, you know, humidity or just you know, dust or pollen or whatever in the air and it just gets very hard to see, particularly when you're flying towards the sun. A whole bunch of wind turbines. Right, I reckon that is most certainly Linton and from there, Duxford should be almost directly to the west. Now, if we had to cut that corner off, we would have had to have descent to under 1500, if you remember. We could have flown underneath it, um, but we would have had to have been lower. Now, the elevation, according to the charts for Duxford, is 126. We'll call that 200 feet. And it said come in at 1,000 QFE. QFE is above the airfield elevation. Uh, so that's about 1,200 feet. We're flying Q&H at the moment which means we need to go in at 1,200 feet, so we'll basically start descending, so we'll bring this down to 1,200. Change that to V-speed moment. Just a nice gentle cruise downwards. Pull back on the power. 
and we're going to need to start looking for Duxford now. I do believe that may well be Duxford. I doubt it'll have as many hangars as it does in real life. I don't think it's particularly well modelled, but it should be fairly recognisable anyway. Okay, so according to the um, the charts, this, this kind of ATZ, the, the pattern, is just around where this ring is here. So what I might do is just turn our heading slightly so we can join a reasonable downwind section. And we'll just bring our descent rate down. Need to get down a bit quicker now. Yeah, that's starting to um, to draw in a little bit now. Okay, at this point you would start looking to check your parking brake was off. Uh, we don't have undercarriage on the on the Cessna. A mixture we'd put to rich if it wasn't already, or set it to whatever our elevation mixture needs to be. Don't need fuel pumps on gravity fed system T's and P's are all looking good don't have a car beats on this one because it's fuel injected and then we check all hatches and harnesses were secure and what I'll do now is I'll disengage the autopilots and we'll fly it manually First thing to do is bring the speed right back. We are at pattern altitude. Just going to hold the attitude as the speed comes back. Like that. And we'll put the first stage of flaps down. Looking to, at this stage, looking to trim for about 70 knots, something like that. Second stage of flaps coming in. Pull the nose up just a touch. Looking for 70. Trim's a bit awkward in this sim. It's like, the longer you hold the trim button down, the more it accelerates. I really wish I had, like, a proper trim wheel. Okay, we're 500 foot above. So we'll start making our left turn in. A little bit more power just to keep the altitude until we get onto the uh, final. And then I'll be looking for final stage of flaps. then 60 knot landing speed is what I'm aiming for. Alright, wings level, final stage of flaps. Let the nose come up a bit, we're looking for 60 knots. Those cars that are passing the runway, I think that is... In real life, that's either the... What's it called? The A14? Or is it still the M11? I'm not 100%. But it should be quite a busy road. Okay, we've done our landing checks. You can see the grass runway on the right as well, you notice. Right, they've got a number of buildings here, but it's nowhere near as many as uh, there are in real life. I'm just going to let it float a little bit because the runway, I think you have to depart at the end. I don't want to have like a massive taxi. There we go. I don't want to have like a massive taxi to the end of the runway, so we'll just keep the speed up a little bit. I'm just going to bring the flaps in. Now what we can do, and I'll show you in a second 
is we can look at the... I mean, you would have already done this, but we'll have a quick look again at the airport diagrams. You can see where the parking is. I think there's two aprons here. I think it's like a west and an east apron. Just to set up slightly so we can see what we're doing. There we go. So you would depart the runway and then do your final cleaning up. So we'll just put the parking brake on a second. And uh, landing light can come off. Tax light can stay on. Beacon light can stay on. Strobes are off. Um, flaps we already did. Now let's just quickly have a look. I'll click on airfields and then we'll click on Duxford's Pooley's Plate Bar. And so there you go. We just landed here and we're now just departed at Delta. And we basically will taxi around and we'll park on the western apron here. There's another one there. But you can kind of see all the buildings here. Uh, this is the big glass one. This is cool, this particular museum site. If you ever get a chance, definitely go here. But yeah, if you land here for real, you and your passenger can... Uh, go inside the museum for a couple of hours, which is quite splendid of them. So, this particular video, um, I just wanted to kind of give you an introduction. I mean, I know some of you it's probably old news, but there's a lot of people for whom it's not old news. But I wanted to give you a, just a flavour of airspace. Um, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to airspace, of course, but that's just something you can deal with later. The fact is, initially, what I'm trying to do is deal with airspace rather than just flying around where I like. Having to deal with airspace is a problem in itself, yet alone having to talk to ATC, which is another subject. Uh, so the app on the iPad is called Sky Demon. It generally is pretty good for covering the UK and Europe. If you're flying in the States, then Four Flights is, um, is a better app for flying in the states um, but Sky Demon in the UK is really really good for VFR stuff right where should we go I want to run that guy over let's just park it here I mean there are there are other apps that you can get for VFR in the UK I just happen to use Sky Demon don't think it's the other one you know I have, I have no association with Sky Demon it's just the one I use um, but there are other ones. Wow, the modelling on that looks a bit nasty. Uh, so, let's see. Coming down here, we shall turn off the taxi light now. Put the trim back to neutral. We shall pull the mixture. We're not going to do all the other checks that you would normally do. We shall turn off avionics. Master... Ignition switch can come off. Put the yoke back. <laughs> Whoops. And that, that's us done in a very strange view. Blimey. Thanks for getting in the way. But yeah, that is how you fly when you're looking at airspace as well. We went from Northweald to Duxford. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful in some way. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. To the next one, take care, guys. Happy flying.